This is the Blade 350QX. It weighs 680 grams. It measures 465 millimeters motor to motor. It has a body made of two plastic halves that are held together with what feels like a billion screws. Now let's take a look under the cover. Here we find four 10M speed controllers that power the 1100 kV outrunners that swings proprietary eight and a quarter inch propellers. The propellers are mounted on the motors using two hex screws instead of the normal collet style mounts. It's kind of awkward. This setup, according to Ryzen Hobby, gives the 350QX flight times of around 10 or 15 minutes. The flight controller is an in-house developed design that works off of the AS3X technology. It has a GPS barometer, 3-axis accelerometers and gyros, and it's capable of multiple different flight modes. It also has a spectrum receiver built into the board, which is convenient, but it also means that you're locked into that system. There's also no way of adjusting gains. The settings you get from the factory is what you have to stay with. The 350QX is available in two different configurations. Ready to fly, which includes everything you need to fly, even the transmitter, receiver, battery, everything. Or as a bind and fly, which requires your own spectrum transmitter. Also included in the kit is a GoPro camera holder. It's designed to use with the GoPro 3 line of cameras, and it uses four rubber balls to dampen vibrations. But how does it actually fly? Okay, so I'm currently flying in safe mode, and in this mode, it's automatically gonna go back to center. It also has a GPS lock, so whatever I do, it's just gonna stay there. The uh, throttle at this point is controlling the altitude between zero meters, which is the ground, and 45 meters. So when I go full throttle, it's gonna stay at 45 meters. Can't really show that now though. So the stick is relative. It doesn't really matter which way the copter is pointing. If I push away from me, it's always gonna go away from me. It's really weird when you have RC experience because it's not natural. But for a person that's just starting out, it's fantastic. It's also flying in GPS all the time. So whatever the wind is doing, it's gonna stay in that column of air and even the height as well. So it's using a barometric pressure to keep its position. This mode is really good for a person that has no RC experience at all because it's all gonna be relative to where you stand, what the stick is gonna do. And it's super docile. In this mode, I can go full rudder, make a turn, and push the stick away from me. It's just gonna go away. I don't have to worry about anything. I can stop it, and I can push it back. And then, even if I'm spinning all the way, and I pull the stick all the way towards me, it's gonna come towards me, and oh my gosh, it's gonna crash straight into my face. Oh my God, I'm gonna die. No, I'm not. It's called safe circle. It creates a bubble around me and the quad will not fly into that zone, whatever you do. So it's just gonna stay there and just rotate and just do whatever it wants. It is never gonna fly into that safe zone. But there's a downside to the safe zone. As soon as you boot up the quad, as soon as you take off, it records that position. Five meters behind that position, straight back, is where your safe zone starts, and it's five meters in diameter. So the problem is, I can still walk out to it and touch it and do bad stuff, but I can still cut myself now. It's not, so there is a downside to it. So it's not 100% safe, but as long as you stay in that safe zone, it is perfectly safe. Now I can flip it into the next mode, which is called stability mode. And the LED on the back is gonna change to blue. And now the stick, the throttle stick, is actually controlling the rate of ascent and decel. So the more stick I go, the faster it's gonna go up and down. It's not, no longer relative to the altitude. It doesn't care about the altitude and there's no ceiling anymore either. But still, it's gonna stay within the GPS column that I put it in. So even if I'm not touching the stick, it's gonna stay in that column. The problem is 
it's not controlled by the barometric pressure sensor anymore. It's just gonna stay in that column. It doesn't care about the altitude anymore. Now, in this mode, the stick is no longer relative to where you stand. If I push forward now, it's gonna go what's forward to the quad, not to what's forward to you. So now in this mode, you actually have to fly it. But also this gives you much more freedom and it's much faster. So the stick is going from zero degrees angle to 45 degrees angle if you go max stick. So if I go full stick, it's gonna go 45 degrees. And as soon as I let go, it's gonna go back. And that's it. This teaches you much more how to fly the quad properly. Because now I have to learn nose in if I go nose in. So now I have to push the stick backwards if I wanted to go forward. And I have to keep that nose and the orientation. But it's still, it's GPS controlled. So as soon as I let go of the stick, it's gonna stay in that column of air. It's no longer gonna keep its altitude because it's not using the bar barometric pressure sensor, but it's gonna stay there whatever the wind is doing to it. And then it's a very stable quad. You can actually walk over to it. So you can be very bad to it. It is very stable. And now the third mode is agility mode. In this mode, there is no limitations. The quad will not do anything for you except remove wind interference. That's it. So it's gyro only now. There's no stick limitations. There's no nothing. It is just straight up and down, fly like a maniac. This means that you can have fun. You can do flips and loops and rolls. As soon as you move the stick, the quad is gonna stay in that angle. There's no auto level, there is no helping you. Oh, that was gorgeous. I landed it. Let's check it out. So when you hit the ground, it goes into uh, like a SOS mode. So you can see the LED on the back is blinking white and it's beeping like crazy. Now, to get it to fly again, all you have to do is turn it off and turn it back on. Woo! Sweet. Another cool feature that the quad has is return to home. So if you get into trouble, uh, you can't see what the quad is doing, whatever, you get too far, it gets out of control. I'm just gonna push it out. I'm gonna fly it so far that I can't see it. So now it's far away. I don't, oh no, I lost orientation. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit the switch and it starts blinking. It goes up to and uh, roughly 20 meters or 15 meters and it's slowly gonna try and come back and as soon as it comes back over the position where the motors were started it's gonna decel and land so I, i'm not touching any controls and we're gonna see how close it lands to where it took off And let's see, it roughly, roughly two meters from where it took off, which is pretty respectable. So it's a really good safety feature. So if you get into trouble, just hit the return to home. It's going to return. It's going to go up to a certain altitude, like 15 meters, start coming back. And when you see it, you can either take it over or let it come down and land for you. It's a, such a good feature because sometimes you get into trouble, you don't know what's going on. That safety feature is golden. 
Thanks mainly to the stability mode, the 350QX is both fun and easy to fly FPV. The auto level on GPS really helps flying FPV. This is because you don't have to worry about where the horizon is at all times. All you have to do is just release the stick and it returns to center. And also the GPS locks makes the quad stay in that general position. So even if you run into some problems, your goggles are fogging up or whatever, the quad is not gonna drift away. And this is very good for new pilots. Since you don't have to worry as much, you can just concentrate on having fun and fly under things, through things, and just getting a feel for how FPV is, which is awesome. Capturing aerial video is a completely different thing though. The 350QX is capable of capturing good video, but it's harder and more work than other copters. This is mainly due to three things. First being its small size. It can easily be buffered around by wind. Secondly, it's due to the proprietary props. They're soft, which is great for durability, but for FPV flying, softer props can start oscillating and induce vibrations, which is bad. They're also more difficult than normal propellers to balance. This is because they don't have a flat bottom and the hole for the prop shaft is not big enough for the cone of the balancer to lock in and center on. All the shots in this video were made with the props straight from the factory, no balancing or anything. Third and last, the lack of adjustable gains. This is a huge thing because different weight setups and different setups in general require different gains and the gains from the factory to me seems a bit high, especially for getting aerial video. All of these things makes it difficult to get a great shot. I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying that the conditions for getting awesome shots are more strict and therefore more rare. Other copters might be able to get footage in worse weather but still make it look good. To summarize, the skill level required is a beginner to intermediate. You can learn on this because the safe mode really helps in the beginning to make it docile and you don't have to worry about orientation. And then you can move up through the different modes and get used to the copter as you go, which is a really good feature. Agility on a scale from 1 to 10 is an 8. It is really agile in agility mode. It flips and loops and rolls like crazy and it feels very locked in. Power, I would say this is a 7. It has plenty of power flying around, it has a good climb rate, it feels powerful. Speed, a 6. It's fast but it's not overly fast. Setup or build time, an 8. It was really easy to get in the air. Durability, a 7. It does take a crash really well, but on the ease of repair scale, it's a solid 1. Because if something were to happen, you have to switch the whole body and it's a, such a big hassle. You have to unscrew a billion screws and then take out all the electronics and move it over to a new body just because one of the motor mounts broke. Line of sight flight experience, a solid seven. It is fun to fly around in the different modes, makes it easy for anyone to fly it and fun for anyone to fly it. FPV flight experience, a seven. The stability mode really helps anyone to fly this FPV and it feels locked in. However, aerial video capability is a three. It is possible to get good shots, but it's difficult. And proprietary props and the lack of adjusting gains just kills it. So. Would I recommend you buying this? Mm, probably not. It's 440 bucks for a ready flight package. To be honest, the DJI Phantom version one is the same price, but you get a controller board that you can use in a future design. And also you can change the, the gains, which you cannot on this one. The gains you get from the factory is what you get. And to, in my opinion, they're too high. So if you want to get into learning to fly a quad, I would buy the Blade Nano QX. Learn to fly on that, it's 70 bucks and it takes a ton of beating and it teaches you to fly just as well as this. It doesn't have the smart mode, but on the other hand, it's a very small and docile quad that doesn't really do any damage when it crashes. But on the other hand, you can fly this FPV, but it's not doing a really good job of capturing absolute fantastic video. It captures okay video and you can get good shots, but it's a lot of work, it's hard. It's not as easy as a bigger platform. So it's, a, it's an okay quad, but it's not a great quad. But 
it might be right for you. Do your research. If you have a Blade 350QX, write a comment, say what you think, because my opinions are not the only opinions out there. Everyone has the right to an opinion and the right to share it. So please go ahead and share it in the comment section. Help people decide if this is the quad for them. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.